So we now get to the first of our two Micro Max races. They'll be taking place uh, throughout the morning. So on pole position, the number 13 of Montego Masson, uh, Moritz Volba is alongside on the f in the 15 on the front row. Alexander Klugel and Leon Vakula, that is row two. Tom Reja and Niklas uh, Casarino, that is row three, ahead of uh, David Giroux and Lennox Meyer. Mika Trapp and uh, Maximilian Pilch round out the top ten. They're followed by Noah Janssen, Matti Klassen, Hugo Gettel, Semel uh, Bayati, Marlon Schaufler, Maxim Becker, Christoph, uh, Christos Malakos and uh, Gabriel Hoffmann. That's an 18-strong grid. So they've just gone onto the sighting lap. Now it's time for the formation as the Rotax are all set to get things underway here on Sunday, the 3rd of November. So with the, damp, uh, with the damp and greasy track out there, it's going to be interesting to see how the racing develops and how the track evolves throughout the course of the day, as these are our youngest competitors here. And one of the six classes that also took part in the uh, Rotax Max Challenge Grand Finals at Sarno at the Circuito Internazionale Lapoli uh, just over a week ago. So the 18 drivers now starting to get themselves into the 2x2 two two rolling start formation. So it's Marsen, Volba, Klugel, Vacula, Reja, Casarino, Giruk, uh, Maya, Trapp and Pilch. That is the top 10. Nicely organised are the 18 drivers. Nine rows of competitors set to get their first of two races underway. So the anticipation starts building as they come through the Schumacher chicane round the final corner. The Rotax engines now get up some pace and we go racing for the first time today. Everyone makes it through the sweeping right-hander into turn one very, very cleanly. And there is a straggler at the back part of the field. So, drivers making their way through. A few overtakes, a few side-by-sides there, going through into the infield part of the circuit. And uh, from what I've already seen, just by the, uh, the first couple of moments of this race, of just how dynamically sweeping uh, this circuit at Kirpen is, as the uh, drivers will now really pick up the pace and get up to speed, as we've already had the number 95 of Gabriel Hoffman retire on the very first lap of this race. So it wasn't a very well-sounding uh, Rotax engine, but it looks like that was a full start as deemed by race control. So we reset the clocks for nine minutes. So we now are down to 17 competitors. Once again, the Micromax competitors showcasing that they can get themselves ready to go at a moment's notice as they head through the final sector here at Kirpen. So we reset for one more time. Let's see if it's second time around as they come through towards the final corner here at Kirpen. They go into the tram lines. That's a bit more neatly organized this time. The Rotax engines roar into life. And already, Klugel was trying to go up the inside into turn one maybe. And we've had a spinner already. And there's one cart that's gone grass tracking through turn one. One driver now regains all this now, someone went very sideways. That was the number 13 of Montego Masson there, going sideways and uh, collected another cart, but managed to keep it going. So, already, someone is definitely uh, sprinting away into the distance, as we have 8 minutes and 31 seconds left to go in this race. The drivers uh, will still have to watch out for the treacherous conditions. And this now gives them a chance to stretch to the legs on the Rotax racing engines. As they come through the, uh, the sweeping left, now head towards the Schumacher chicane. 
And there is a bit of a distinct advantage of the driver that is currently out in front. And as they cross the start finish line, that is the number 80 of Alexander Klugel. Klugel has now sprinted away and is ahead of Montego Masson, who's kept second at the moment. Lennox Meyer up into third place. Tom Heger, uh, Maximilian Pilch, they've all made up places. And it looks like we've got uh, David Giruk as well and uh, Maxim Becker look to be the ones at the tail end of the field. So Klugel had an advantage of just over 1.1 seconds after the first lap of action here. Some great little battles starting to uh, present themselves around about from sort of sixth onwards, and maybe towards the back part of the field. And und Max, ich habe eine Gäste hier in Sprecherbüro. Max Reis, herzlich willkommen. Uh, gibt es einen Überblick über diese Klasse? Um, ja, also, also von dem Rennen jetzt? Oder? Ja, von dem Rennen jetzt. Was, uh, gib mir einen Überblick, über was hast du gesehen im Moment? Ja, also ich habe gesehen, dass sich ähm, in der ersten Kurve viele gedreht haben und es wurden auch ein paar rausgekegelt. Und ja, die probieren jetzt auch wieder alle aufzuholen, zum Beispiel der Moritz Wolber, der ist jetzt auch nach hinten gefallen und probiert jetzt auch das Feld aufzuholen. Und ja, Alexander Kühl kann sich im Moment sehr gut absetzen und hat sehr viel Vorsprung. Okay, danke Max. Wir werden mit Max äh, ein bisschen mehr heute Morgen sprechen über die Mikro- und der äh, Minimax-Klasse. So back into English and Alexander Klugel has now got a lead of one and a half seconds over Montego Massen in the number 13 who's currently occupying uh, second position. Uh, Maximilian Pilsch has got past Niklas Casarino for fourth place whereas Mika Trapp and Noah Janssen have also made positional gains up to 11th and 12th respectively. As you can just see, for those watching on the live stream, Matti Klassen down in 15th, absolutely hustling the cart through the corners. And I'm just keeping an eye on the lap times at the minute that Marsen is about three-tenths of a second, uh, three-tenths of a second slower than Kugel, Kugel, who is pulling away or trying to and hasn't because Marsen has actually just gone quicker. That's a 1 minute 3.290. But in the meantime, Klugel has also uh, got uh, the fastest lap of the race at the minute, a 1 minute 3.205. So with the track still being, uh, the sun is starting to glint off of the surface as they head into corner, corner one. As it looks like Leon Vacula is trying to battle with uh, Semel Bayati for seventh place. And they've just, I think they've, uh, it looks like Vacula's just made the move, which looks to be the case. Um, so at the moment the entire field separated by just over 20.4 seconds. Five minutes and eight seconds left remaining on the clock in the first of two uh, Micro Max races. The second one will get underway at around about just before one o'clock this afternoon. As there are some great battles coming along and one of them looks to be, I've just seen the 88, that's Tom Heger. I think being chased down by Nicolas Casarino as uh, Klugel goes past the finish line. And the gap now was 1.4 seconds. It's now up to just over 1.5. So Lennox Meyer, Maximilian Pilich, Tom Heger. That's the top five at the moment. But Heger is only just under four tenths of a second ahead. As there's a great battle a little bit further back. Looks like Norris Volber was going up the inside of Morn Schaufler for P10. And oh, that's a little bit sideways there. And I think that was the number 15, 15 of Volber. He's been battling away for P10 and now he's getting swallowed up by the likes of Janssen, uh, Malakos and Gürtel. So Max, a bit of a spannend race in the Micro Max Class in the moment, do you think? Yeah, in the moment there are not so many fighters, except here by Moritz Wolber. And it's also a very interesting race, I think. The front of the front of Alexander has already a lot of distance. It's hard to get Montego there still. But yeah, the field has been a little bit broken down and yeah. Wird sich jetzt auch wird noch ein paar Überholmöglichkeiten geben, aber jetzt auch nicht mehr so viel, weil es sind ja nur noch drei Minuten. Okay, danke Max. So back to the action, 3 minutes and 39 seconds. Nice move up the inside. That is for a positional change. And that is just behind the number 50. That is Leon Vacula. So I think that is that Mika Trapp's gone up the inside of Semler Bayati in the number 20 through the final corner. As there's more toing and froing down towards the back part of the field. Oh, there's a, there's a clatter in, and that looks to be Mika Trapp that's just been pushed aside. Uh, but uh, Trapp gets uh, manages to get back out of the kitty litter, out of the gravel, and back onto the circuit. And not quite happy about what's just transpired. 
So we're coming into the last 180 seconds and some of the uh, Micromax drivers at the back of the field are swarming all over each other like a pack of hornets. So it's going to be very interesting how, because at the moment, Alexander Klugel's lead is quite uh, immense at the moment. It's, uh, it was 2.4 seconds last time around, but it looks like Mas uh, Marston's got the uh, bit between the teeth and comes across the start-finish line. And it's round about the same, 2.383 seconds between first and second position. As uh, Lennox Meyer, uh, Maximilian Pilch and Tom Hager, that completes the top five, all separated by just over 9.2 seconds. Castellino's trying to chase down Hager as well. And there's the battle on screen at the moment, as uh, Casarino definitely is going to have the slipstream advantage as they come through the flat left where the uh, drivers have got the foot to the, thro uh, the, foot to the floor. Uh, and it looks like we have had a yellow flag situation a little bit further towards the infield of the circuit as we go into the last couple of moments. Some more overtakes. And there is a train of four, and that looks to be in the middle of that. That is the 77 of Marlon Schaufler, who's just been pounced on by Moritz Volber there. That is for P11. As Klugel just streaking away into the distance ahead of Maasen. Uh, and the gap now nearly two and a half seconds with just over 90 on the clock. To 90 seconds still to go. So Klugel leads from Maasen, Mayer, Pilsch, Reja, uh, Casarino, Vacula, Bayati. And now that looks to be Mika Trapp who's just uh, gone across the line in P10 having been passed by Noah Janssen in the 31 for ninth position. Moritz Volber, great move up the inside of Mon Schaufler in the 77 for P11 as they are still battling for what is just outside of the top 10. We've got just under a minute remaining in this race. And Klugel, I think, has uh, done the business quite early on. So, Max, the uh, die Führung von uh, Alexander Klugel, the Vorsprung, that he had in the near of two and a half seconds, that's a good, good run for, for him, eh? Ja, er hat sich sehr gut abgesetzt, also er konnte auch sauber fahren, er hat jetzt nicht so viele Fehler gemacht. Wird halt jetzt schwer für Montego Maaßen nochmal ranzukommen. Also ich denke nicht, dass er Alexander hier noch ein paar Fehler macht, aber ja, man weiß es nie, es kann ja auch noch viel passieren. Und die Strecke, es ist äh, noch ein bisschen nass, wir haben voller Regen gestern, äh, aber es wird ein bisschen eng für die Fahrer bei den Grip, bei den Reifen, äh, denkst du? Ja, es ist auch immer schwer zu sagen, fährt man jetzt Regen oder fährt man trocken. Und je nachdem, also wenn es jetzt nochmal anfangen würde zu regnen, wird es ja mehr Sinn machen, mit den Regenreifen zu fahren. Aber das kann man natürlich nie wissen. Danke, Max. So, I've just seen a great move from uh, Casarino up the inside of Tom Hedger for P5. As we now are on to the penultimate lap of this race. Every single race today will be a timed race plus an additional lap. And uh, Kugel's lead has been absolutely decimated by Montego Masson. Uh, and it's now, it was around two and a half seconds. It's now being truncated down to 1.834. As uh, Klugel still trying to keep clean and just keep, uh, keep going. So Klugel and Marsen now go on to the final lap of this race. As does Meyer, Pilsch. Then Casarino, Reger, uh, Vacula. And it's definitely a slipstream fest between Noah Janssen, who goes back, who tries to go up inside of uh, Mika Trapp for what was ninth position, but Trapp still keeps ahead. And uh, it's still it's still a battle between them. So Trapp still ahead of Janssen for P9. I'm just keeping an eye out for Alexander Klugel, who is now heading into the final part of the circuit through the left-hander, goes a little bit sideways there, but still manages to keep it through, goes through the Schumacher chicane for the final time, and round the final corner comes the number 80 of Alexander Klugel, who takes the victory in the first Micromax uh, race of the day and celebrates with one hand off the wheel. His lead ahead of Montego Masson, who takes second place, was 1.527 seconds. Looks like Lennox Meyer, I believe, has taken P3. Ahead of Maximilian Pilsch, Niklas Casarino had a great battle right up until the dying moments ahead of uh, with, with the 88 of Tom Hager. So they ran out the top six. 
Leon Vakula, Semil Bayati, Mika Trapp and Noah Janssen round out the top ten. Max, das war eine gute Rennen äh, um Start dieses Tages, aber wir können etwas ein bisschen anders sehen, äh, vielleicht ein bisschen später, oder? Ja, also ich denke, das Rennen ist noch sehr auf, ausbaufähig. Am Anfang, ich weiß ja nicht, vielleicht gibt es da noch eine Strafe für Montego Maaßen, weil er da den Tom Mola und den äh, Tom Rega ein bisschen ausgeschoben hat. Und äh, ja, mal gucken jetzt. So, all results are considered as provisional, pending any technical and sporting checks post-race. So, our first Micromax uh, race has a winner, and it's the number 80 of Alexander Klugel. Montego Masson takes second by just under 1.5 seconds behind Klugel with Meyer, Pilch, Casarino having a great battle with Tom Reja for P5, with the number 12 coming ahead of the 88. Leon Vakula in the 50 is seventh, ahead of Semmel Bayati, Mika Trapp and Noy Janssen in the numbers 18 and 31 respectively, rounding out the top 10. Completing the order, it's Moritz Volber, David uh, Giroux, Maron Schaufler, Christos Mal uh, Malakos, Matti Klaassen, Hugo Gettel, Maxim Becker, and unfortunately, we've got to see whether Gabriel, uh, Gabriel Hoffmann will have something to say as he had a technical failure right on the start-finish line. So that's the first of multiple races completed here uh, at Kirpen. So, danke für die Überblick. Wir werden uns sprechen über Minimax. Das kommt sofort, Max. Ja. So, next up, uh, and, and obviously Max is up in the commentary box with me because he doesn't need to race this weekend. So, well done. Gut gemacht dieses Jahr. So, uh, now the scrutineering phase gets underway. And they do have to adhere to uh, the current uh, regulations as per uh, club sport uh, technical regulations. And obviously, uh, the race control might be a little bit busy looking into race events, as Max was just explaining for those that were uh, listening, some of those German, uh, our German uh, viewers over there. Dankeschön uh, für die Unterstützung dieses Wochenende und für die ganze Saison. So I will switch into German as much as possible. So hopefully Max is going to learn a bit of English from me uh, here today. And it's really good to have him in the commentary box. 